So I'm about 20 years old, and I'm in the passenger side seat of my station wagon. We're going about 60 miles an hour down a little tiny state road in North Carolina. And I'm in the seat doing the thing where you're trying to sleep, and it kind of looks like your neck is broken. And I'm trying to lean my head on the seat belt to hold up my head while I say, and it never really works, but you're so tired, you just wish it would. Um, and suddenly I feel whoop, 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 whoop. I hear from the driver's side, flat tire, sorry. And my roommate at the time puts us over to the side of the road. I hop out. And most people would be pretty miffed at this point, but I was actually excited. I was really happy at this point because we'd been on this road trip, this college road trip, for four days. And we had planned, we had been talking this up with our friends for ages and about all the amazing adventures we were going to have. We were going to avoid the interstates and eat at the little local diners and meet real American salt of the earth people. And the truth is, all we'd really seen was a few plaques on the side of the road and some of the saddest waffle houses in existence. <laughs> so I thought, this is a chance. This is our big chance to have an adventure. So that when we come back to, to after spring break to college, and our friends are telling us about getting drunk and having sex on the beach, we'll be like, oh, well, what I saw was real America. <laughs> so I hop out, I go to the back of the station wagon, open up the back, throw aside the sleeping bags, the filthy laundry, the four pound bag of cocoa pebbles that we've been subsisting off of for the whole trip so far, get the spare tire out, get the tire and iron out, pull off all the lug nuts, and I can't get the damn wheel off. So my roommate tries the same thing. We try brute force, we try kicking it, we try shouting obscenities at it, and the truth is, that's about all you have if you're a 20-year-old guy. So a little shamedly, he says, I do have AAA, we could call them. But my phone's at the bottom of that mess that you just made out of the back of the car. He says, oh, no problem, give me the AAA card. I'm just gonna go, I'll find a lovely Good Samaritan neighbor. We'll get to know them, they'll help us out of a jam. So he looks around, where in a tiny town, there is not a house in sight. There is not a light bulb in sight. But he gives me the card, and he starts digging for the phone, and I march off for, to, to go meet my saviors. So about a mile down the road, I finally see a light in a farmhouse. So I think, perfect, they're awake even. So I trudge up to the, to the front of the door, knock on the door, and... Uh, finally, it takes, it takes five or ten minutes, but finally this old man comes to the door. And he just looks at me a little confused. And I want to be as non-threatening as possible, because this guy's probably not used to getting a lot of, a lot of guests at 10.30, 11 o'clock at night. And they say, oh, hi, I'm so sorry to bother you. I'm not from around this area, um, but my roommate and I are on this big road trip. And we, uh, something was in the road, I think, and we got a flat tire, uh, and we couldn't get it off. Do you mind if I use your phone to call AAA? He just looks at me, kind of leery, and says, what? So I think, OK, maybe he's a little hard hearing. Maybe he's just a little out of it. So I tell him the whole story a little bit louder, a little bit shorter. I'm not from around here. I just have a flat tire. Do you mind if I, do you mind if I call AAA? Again, what? So I keep telling the story shorter and louder over and over again. He finally cuts me off, and he just says, go around to the back door. I don't know why he thinks his hearing's gonna get better if I go to the back door, but he's the one with a phone and I'm the one with a flat tire, so I go around. And again, it takes him forever to get to the back door. I just think this is the most slow moving person on the planet. And no, he finally shows up, looks a little bit more awake, a little bit more confident, gets to the door, opens it up and says, now, what is it that you want? And he has one hand on his cane and in the other is a gun that he points at me. This thing looks like it's a revolver from the Spanish-American War. It was <laughs> the only thing within 100 miles as old as this man. <laughs> and I grew up around guns, so I'm usually not scared by them, but I'm also not used to them being pointed at me by shaky old man hands. <laughs> and I'm not used to them being pointed at me by someone who hasn't decided whether that's the night I need to get shot. So my mind's racing, and I'm, I, I can feel this spot on my chest where I can imagine that the bullet's going to hit. I feel it burning, and I think, oh my god, did I already get shot? <laughs> Are there three graves behind the barn behind me where he's put three other Yankees who got flat tires? <laughs> and I just give my shortest, loudest version with phone. 
and he got that one. He goes, oh. He turns around and he walks inside. He doesn't say come in. He just stops, walks around, goes back into his living room. And I freeze trying to decide whether this is the moment that I should just be running the other way or whether this is my opportunity and the best I'm going to get is an invitation. I finally decide to go in. He's sitting down in his Barca lounger. He's got one hand with a pistol, still pointed at me, still pointed at my chest. And his other shaky finger is pointed at a little tiny stand with a doily on top and an old rotary phone. <laughs> and I have to pretend I'm grateful for this. So I thank him profusely and I sit down and I get the AAA card and I pick up the phone and I dial one, eight, zero. The zeros take forever on a rotary phone. <laughs> And you fuck them up every time, it seems. And I realize I've been, I've been set up for what is the game show idea of the most absurd test of nerves, to have to dial one at gunpoint. <laughs> so four or five trials later, I finally get through. I finally dial all 11 digits correctly. And I hear, thanks for calling AAA. We're here to help. Please press 1 on a touchtone phone for immediate assistance. <laughs> So I do the only option I have, and I just go, tick, one. And it clicks and hangs up on me. So I get to try all over again. Finally, I get through. I get through to a human being. And I tell them, oh, thank you so much. I just have a flat tire. I give them my name. I give them the number on my roommate's card. She says, well, well sir, that's not your card. I say, no, 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 no. I, I, my roommate's going to be at the car. Or it's OK. You just need to send someone there, and he'll be there. But he's like a mile away, so he can't come to the phone. And I think, well, you know, I could pretend to be my roommate. I could be like, oh, hello, yes, this is the roommate. But <laughs> then I realize I already told this old man my name, so falsifying my identity is probably not a good idea at gunpoint. So, <laughs> so I, I just beg her. I'm like, please, will you, will you send? I promise he will be there. She says, I'm sorry, that's not our policy. I say, there is a man with a gun pointed at me. <laughs> For the love of God, send help. <laughs> and she still says, I'm sorry, sir. That's not our policy. And she hangs up on me. And then I realize that this old man's hearing may not be great, but he definitely heard me just tell a stranger on the phone that he was holding me at gunpoint. And what's absurd is when I, that came out of my mouth, even I was coming out, I stopped it because I wanted to say, there's an old man holding me at gunpoint. And somehow that seemed rude, so I censored myself. <laughs> so he doesn't say anything. He gets up. Clearly, I am no longer welcome in this house. And he leads me to the, um, he leads me back to the door. And the only thing he says is, watch out, then dogs will bite. And out of nowhere, I don't know where these dogs were up to this point, but from behind the barn, three dogs come running out of the shadows, barking and snapping. And I start sprinting back to the car, thinking that maybe I need to be a little more particular about the kinds of adventures I decide to go on. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah.